what I found to be the best way to do it. Spine grit sharpening stone, some WD-40 and clean it up. All right, this little area down here is kind of a, it's a freaking pain. It's a snow plow. Can you zoom in right here and see this little lip? There's little ridges where the rust has came up. No, I really can't see it. You can kind of see that little ridge right there. It's on the outside of the gasket, but there's a couple more over here on this, on the number eight port. So I'm just going around and just trying to knock this off and then we'll stone it. And if I can, sand it, whatever, but just try to clean it up, so. Uh, yeah, it's very tedious, especially on a snowplow truck. All right, we're gonna try and get this block drain out. Look at it, it looks horrible. I don't know that this is gonna happen. We might have to thread a bolt extractor, but I'll see them if I can line it up. All right, well, doesn't look very promising. Oh, look at that. Let's see how well it goes in. Good luck getting it out of there. We'll see. Oh, look at that. We got it? Yeah, we got it. It's spinning it off, isn't it? It's spinning it off crazy. You ready? All right, here. We got it. Good deal. See how the passenger side goes. Yeah, let's see. I haven't taken a massive bath yet or cracked my hand wide open. Look at oh, that, we got it. Right, got here. it too. Here we go. So I'm thinking we might have to just start buying new up pipes. Uh, we actually weld these here too because I've had these come apart. We put, we put little tack welds on here to hold the plate to it. It doesn't have to seal it because it seals on the inside. It needs to hold it. I've had them blow apart right there. So we do a little bit of welding there. We'll, and cleaning them up, they're just, they're getting old now and they're harder to make look good. You know, we'll have to machine them. So I haven't even checked to see how much. See this right here? See all that? Just from being old and from welding it. But touch off on the regular. That's the bench grinder, she's about dead. We'll just touch off a little bit, see how um, it's, try to clean some of that off. Just try to make it nice. That'd be it. All right, right down there, we're uh, getting the accumulator out, so I cover this with a trash bag, and we're gonna brake clean it. Brake clean down there, I don't wanna get it in a lot of places, so brake clean and blow gun. Clean the whole connection up before we go taking it apart. We're gonna get it all over the floor, but. Yeah, little, that, that grease right there, yeah, you gotta use brake clean on that grease. It's the only thing getting it off. See, look, it's eliminating it. I don't do it on painted stuff. But that grease, <laughs> it's like an eraser. It's going away. And that, this had an exhaust leak. And it's sooted. You can see it's pretty freaking nasty out there, so. Uh, there, oh, all right, yeah, there. Well, we're running into a problem. This line, this nut orifice tube is right here. This nut is seized to this line. I spun it and we got a, quite a few turns out of it. Well, maybe one, two threads out of it. And it just, it wouldn't break loose from this line and it was actually having to spin this line. I was running a problem. So I think we're gonna go ahead and replace both lines. This one, the one that goes to the evaporator core and the one that goes to the condenser. And it's got the orifice tube joint in the middle. I mean, we can, pro we, we can probably make it work. I'm worried about here. I mean, it does have rub marks in it. And this side, I haven't really inspected this side very well, but we're gonna go check and see how much they are. I mean, I'm at least gonna get them apart. I've tried, it's 15 16ths and a 7 8 15 16 7 8 and I mean, you can see I've already screwed it all up trying to get it off. So it's a snowplow truck. So I'm gonna try to put these on and just get it separated. Even though it's already off, but I'd like, no matter what, we gotta get to the orifice tube, whether we replace the whole line or nothing. So I'm gonna sit here and I'm not gonna let it beat me, so we're gonna take it apart. So let's. All right, we got the wrench on the top. Julie's got a big old bar on it trying to hold it, and I'm gonna try and do this. Try and push it down. It takes a lot. You can't tell how much. Oh, all right. Hold on, did I get it? Either that or the wrench moved. What a pain in the butt. Yep, I mean, we're getting new lines, so. 
I at least wanted to see what the orifice tube looked like, so I'll just take it off the truck and we'll do it on the bench. It's we can do pain it. Yeah, but oh, there it goes. I wonder how bad it is. This is basically an AC refresh kit. I mean, you know, if, even if there's no issues with it and you have to crack it open, I mean, you're doing a wonderful service if you at least, if a functioning system, evaporator core is pretty clean, no damage, go ahead and put a new orifice tube and a new dryer. If you, oh, it goes. keeps spinning around. Look at that. I see that, that line is just... It was, oh look, look how bad that looks. Yeah, that's never going on a truck again. Let me see. It's horrible. Yikes. It's all destroyed. You ready? Watch it drip all over the ground. Oh man, gotta use these little guys. I might not, I might be able to use a little bigger pair, maybe. I think, the plow, man. I think the last one we had to destroy to get it out. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Ugh. Jesus. It doesn't want us to see Ugh. what it looks like. Give me some oil. Turn it. No, it's sticking to it. Look. It's not even spinning in there. We might not ever see this. Unless we cut the line, we're going to replace it anyways. You can see it in there. Yeah, it's, it's in there. It's in there. You don't have a light on. Crazy. Maybe I'll squeeze these handles in the vise and just pull on the line. <laughs> I mean, we could blow on the other side. So right there, hose assembly, YF3572, special order, 66 bucks. There you go. So we're actually 42 on this screen, but we're not paying that much. Or we're paying more than that a little bit because we're getting it right now. So we get a new line. They don't sell it. They don't sell it as one. Like there's no orifice tubes all circle. You can buy the O-ring and the nut, but other than that, that's it. So we got to buy the whole line. Gillis. So from now on, when we do orifice tubes in six fours, I mean, I, it's not even worth it. Not for a $50 bill. It's not worth it. Just replace the whole line because you can pull this line out the front of the truck. If you get that quick disconnect done, you can pull the entire line out and change the orifice tube, not even in the truck. As long as you get that quick disconnect loose right here, which is a pain in the butt. Well, I'll start here. Got part of the orifice tube out. The other half is still stuck in there. Considering it should look like that. But we did get the new line. We got it. It showed up. And we actually had some more up pipes show up. These are actually off Mark and Deborah's truck. So we might go ahead and put them back on Mark and Deborah's truck. Anthony's back oh, yeah. here cleaning the other one. Hey, this is not made in China. No. This is made right here. And this one's rusted. Mark, Mark, you're getting your flange back. We actually did. We slowed down enough that we went ahead and used your flanges, redid those. I'm going to try to touch it up before we put a little paint on it. Hopefully not tear anything up. Okay, what? Okay, I just interrupted her. I made it. I had she, my video had under her. control. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh. Sometimes if, it, if these get stuck, I mean, you just, I mean, it ain't worth buying a new sensor. Just spin it around as you tighten it in and then plug it in afterwards. Just, it, it ain't worth it. I mean, it'll be fine. You just, they seize together. Okay. We'll take these. This is made in America, baby. Nothing from China. Oh, I hope not. Uh, if that says China, I'm going to throw this in the trash right now. <laughs> we got that from McMaster Car. Hell, I, I, 
PM F60. Here you go, I'll read it off. ABP. ASP. F is in Frank 304-L3 M2 K D B1 6. Okay. Of course. Why wouldn't it say that? I mean, look how good this cleans up. I don't. Hey, any of you guys know about this brand? That's actually good. That's we've had it for a long time. Beat the heck out of it. Look at that. Doesn't that look like something you would have, like, aftermarket? Something all shiny look when you turn it over. Nah. Yeah, it's just a stock pipe. They look like that if you clean them. Oh, he got them all cleaned up. Now he's gonna put some things, well, primer first. Look at that old girl, she's, let's go ahead and put some on her. She's had a rough life. <laughs> Should've cleaned those threads out, but. We'll get them. Looks good. Just taking a shot of the new manifold. Oh, looking at the new stuff. Yep. All right, well, so we got a man. The driver's side's quite a bit more of a pain in the butt to torque than the passenger side. And I already got the driver's side done. I'm torquing the 22, and I am going and using the torque sequence, but we'll uh, get him torqued in and and then move on, I guess. Uh, background, it's grandson day today. Of course, he's outside counting rocks in the driveway. But we're gonna clean this. Try and just wipe it off, because we didn't take it off the truck. It's ran down in the snow plow stuff. And it was completely covered with nasty. Nastiness. Yep, now it's touchable. So now we'll put this back on the battery cable and run it back in there. We got the manifolds torqued, the valve covers back on, the heat shield on. Uh, the starter in and now we're going to get the battery cable set where it's going to be and then we'll put the AC compressor in and then and then the negative battery cables and then we'll be pretty close on this side pretty close then we'll go up top low plugs accumulator go on orifice tube line yes we're just I said it before I can't believe they paid me for this this is this we're having a good time okay it's Monday morning we got the new AC line on Getting stuff done up top here. Anthony's finishing this one. We're gonna put some new stuff on here. And gaskets and O-rings. Gaskets for this. This is the last one we put new lines on. With the orifice tube, it wouldn't come apart, so we put a new one in it. It's kind of a mess here right now. It's weird. We don't normally, we don't normally I would take the whole top end apart, but we didn't need to. I mean it's uh, it had broken exhaust manifold bolts, so we got that fixed. We got our exhaust on the back. We went and got new manifolds. We put new manifolds on yes, we from did. Ford. A uh, new accumulator. Yep, it's brand new in there. New accumulator and the orifice tube line. This is snowplow truck. The orifice tube line just would not separate. And wasn't that bad to, I mean, it could have been a lot more expensive, I think. I don't remember it being too bad with the orifice tube in it. And so that's a whole new line. So it can be serviced in the future. So now we're gonna throw this AC back together. This is the last connection for the AC in the truck. It's a mess right now, but we've just- uh, We're just, working on it. Just chiseling <laughs> away at little we parts. We still have uh, the cap mounts, but that'll be the last thing. We already have all the bottoms out. So the hard part's yeah. done. All we gotta do is, j is jack it up and put the cap mounts in. The hardest part is the air hammering to get the cab mounts to separate where they yep. seize together. And the bonus is that has already been done. So yep. we're good to go there. So throw this sucker together. Worked some on Saturday. And hopefully, honestly, hopefully. It might be running, going today. Who knows? Running we'll today. Got a well, we got a tie change. rod down there. There's a tie rod on the bottom. Yeah, there's a tie rod on the bottom. We'll do an oil change and I guess there's a fuel leak under there so anthony's still got to check it out a tie rod under there somewhere and gonna get a really good bath and cleaned up and ready to go back to mark and deborah keep you guys updated it's usually a pretty good sign when the fender well's going back in 
and we got the new lower radiator hose for the driver's side. And we're waiting for more terminal spray to get the batteries all done. Quick update. All right, well, this is going to cause us to need an alignment by the time we replace this. Um, this one just straightens the steering wheel. This one down here, when you get the threads in, it, you know, that's the actual toe in, toe out of the front axle. So, now we got to replace this bottom one. Yeah, so we do this. Take it in grease. I know they say they want you to like bed bowls especially. They want you to clean off the Loctite and put new Loctite on it. Yeah, no. I mean, I've never seen a cab fall off. I've seen them rust on there though. So. Yeah, we grease them up. All right, let's look under here. It's leaking horribly bad. So we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and take the pump off the truck and clean it up, refresh it, get it. That's nasty. I think we gotta buy the, I think it's cheaper to buy the entire manifold cover with the four lines than it is just to buy the Peacock. So that's ridiculous, but it's true. So just buy the entire manifold cover and it comes with the Peacock and it's cheaper. So that's what we'll, that's what we're going to do. So it's neat to have your little there you go. On the it looks like crap. So Schrader valves cost a lot of money. That's the high side Schrader valve. They, uh, a lot of Freon's lost just because of a Schrader valve. With the accumulator that we got, had a new Schrader valve, and I put pag oil. I put one ounce of pag oil in it, and the oil that we use has dye in it, so I don't need to put any more dye in it right now. So we just yeah. primed up the up. fuel fuel cooler, and now we're bleeding this for the fuel cooler. You command fuel the fuel cooler pump on. Yeah. I know you can't. A lot of I don't know if a lot of people do that, but you can command it on and prime out the fuel cooler system. Right now we're priming out the fuel system. You go ahead and kill the key, it's good. Just an update. Okay, and here's the update on the AC. It's it's down. When you're down that low right there, that's it's it back down. It's been back for an hour now. I think so. So we'll put it on vacuum and go ahead and pull another little hard back real quick. Just let it pull some more at it and then we'll fill it with Freon. All right, so it's pushing the last in. It took it pretty good, up to 64, so now it'll start pushing it. Now the machine kicks on and it'll start pushing it in. There we go, we're we'll pushing it on up. Then we'll get it fired up here in just a second. We're getting ready to fire it right now. All right, let's go ahead and long crank this. So I keep the air filter out, but I got the mass airflow kind of plugged in. Let's see how it starts. Go ahead, go for it. Haha, <laughs> baby. All right, here we go. Let's try this again. It went all the way. All right, hit it. All right, that fired up good. Go ahead and turn the air on. Let's see, we want this one to go down. There it goes. Drop down a bit. Yeah, that's pretty low. Wait for it to, it says 40. We're all the way down to 22, so it's pulling a lot. I mean, it's, it's pretty clean. That that new dryer, a lot of times, or accumulator, whatever you want to call it, those, I mean, if you got a, a shaky, sometimes not so cold AC system, I mean, most of the time, put a dryer on it. Put an accumulator on it, it'll actually help it even more. So, just wanted to get the AC charged. I, I had the wrong button. So we'll get the caps all put on, get everything. Sounds good, we didn't need to prime too much, but we're probably gonna take the fuel pump apart down on the fuel rail, down on the up frame rail. So, I just dropped it. All right, well, very cool.